My tire got to bulge. Is it the death sentence for a tire? Probably. Let's find out. Let's cut it open, see exactly what's going on when you get a big old blister or a bulge on the side of your tire. I'll give you guys kind of a close up. It protrudes almost a quarter of an inch, the three millimeters or so. And you can see it starts, it starts about here and it goes, it's essentially the whole sidewall. Um, I know what's going on, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this section out and I'm going to show you the different layers and what is actually happening. But I just wanted you to get a good picture before we start cutting it up exactly what's going on. Because as soon as I let the pressure out too, it's probably going to deflate back down and, and look normal. But before we do that, can we resist? Can we resist slashing a tire? Ah, I don't think we can. Okay, this is where it was, right on the zero. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the, the piece. If you don't know how tires are constructed, the sidewalls are actually really thin. There's actually no wires in the sidewall. There's just nylon cords, and you'll see in a second. And you got your steel belting, your radial belts, that are actually on the top. And they only extend to about this line. Almost the line that goes around tires where the tread stops is about where they stop. So we'll come out to here. We're gonna come out kind of far. So here we go, we gotta cut out. And you can see this white stuff in here. This is just nylon rope, just thin, barely thicker than sewing thread nylon rope. And if you look, you can see it coming down and then you see two layers. So what's, what's going on is they actually have it coming down towards the bead. And then on the bead, you have these, these uh, metal wires. This is actually the, the cordage out of a tire and the, this, uh, rope, wraps around like underneath them and over the top and then goes back and they fill all that in with rubber. So they lay down, we'll have like a, a casing, just a, like a form and they'll lay down a layer of thin rubber. Then they'll lay down the cordage around through. They'll lay a piece of rubber in between it and then they'll lay another piece of rubber on the top. They put it in and they vulcanize it and cure it and everything. But what causes these blisters is I have a puncher that has went through essentially this first layer of rubber in between. So you got one layer of rubber for the inside, then the cordage, another layer of rubber, and then more cordage. And they kind of sandwich together, but they glue together, they bond together. So what's happened is I've created a puncher on just the inside rubber layer. And I actually have it here. I just barely missed it, which is lucky. I cut right below above it. This right here is my puncher down to the cordage and you can see the cordage. And so what's happening is air from the inside of the tire is actually being forced around those cords and it's following down those cords and inflating the outside rubber piece, which is actually thicker than the inside rubber piece, but it has no cordage to hold it together. So this is going to slowly peel away. And we can start cutting it open and peeling it back and I can show you, but it's going to slowly start peeling away and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it doesn't take much just to make it pop. But how I got this puncher was from hitting a pothole. So what happened is I hit a pothole, the tire compressed so much that it hit the rim and fractured it. So it just hit so abruptly and so fast, it fractured it. And you can actually see, let's see if I can get you guys in there. My cords are actually ripped. It actually ripped the fiber cords. So can you drive on it? Yes. Will it get bigger? Yes. Is it a bomb waiting to happen? Yes. So, and I'm super cheap. That's why I slashed it. Because I knew that I would just think that I was going to save it as a spare or something else. Cause it still had good tread. Let's see if we can get in here. So I split it right down where the bubble was and it's 
pretty hard to see, but essentially along these strings, it's just inflating. It's kind of hard to tell, but all these strings are pretty loose. Let's see if I can get a string out for you just to show you show you what your sidewall is made out of. Not really. They're really glued in there. They're just they're kind of a really loosely round string that you would not think you're you know these little strings are what your what your life is depending on. But what happens is every time this tire goes around, it flexes and the sidewall just bulges every rev revolution it goes around and it's just going to continue and grow and grow and there's some horrifying pictures of bulges just you know things just popping out the side and if you have any dry rotting or dry cracking of course it's not going to help but If you want the best lock on tire check, I'll put a link below. I'm able just to lock it on and then you can seat the bead by hand. There it goes. Yep. And then you can walk away while it pops if it makes you nervous. Ginger wants you guys to see what's inside of a tire. Here, hop off. <laughs> You're too eager. Get off. How about up down? There we go. So we got the inside of the tire here. Cut it apart. You see the steel beads, the steel um, that runs all the way around the tire. You got one here, one here. You got some steel up here. There's actually two layers of crisscross steel, which makes a radial tire. But below that, you got this this nylon cord. Just a bunch of these strings, and what they do. We'll just take one. And they're about this size. That's about all there is in them, even bigger tires and stuff like that. They just run along the inside, go around that steel bead, and they end about right there on each side. The same string will just go all the way along, wrap around, and over here. And they're just laid out, you know, it's laid out all the way under here, just one continuous piece and ends. But they're just laid out directly below the actual the radial tires. Um, and the problem is, is they're laid out in a pattern like this, just across the whole tire, just straight up and down. So once you get a little air introduced into these strings, the air will flow down them and just inflate essentially a bunch of little balloons all the way along them. But it'll also push up under the, uh, under the steel wires and inflate. And it'll probably actually inflate on the inside we can't see, but it'll actually, after, if enough heat and pressure comes along the tire, and every time it actually goes over, there's a little bump, it will actually start separating the uh, the nylon from the steel cords, and that's where you see the uh, the whole outside of the tire, you know, the road alligator come off and laying on the freeway, and you just lose your, because you'll see sometimes tires, I've had tires that have blown out, but the, the casing itself is still completely intact and still holds air. I just have no tread left. And that's because all the strength just comes from these little ropes in here in a radial tire. Um, just quickly, bias ply, they don't, all they had was a bunch of this. And they just, they actually ran it. They had, the reason they still run it on trucks and stuff like that and heavy duty trailers is they can handle load better. Because on the sidewalls, you got multiple layers. You know, you have a two ply rating or something else like that, or two plies, four ply, eight ply. It's because they just kept layering down plies of these strings and rubber in crisscrossing pattern. And that gives the sidewalls a ton of strength and actually gives the tread pattern a ton of strength. They just don't, it just doesn't wear as nice or ride as nice as a radial. So there you go. There we go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, there's some fun, useful information there. Ginger wants to say goodbye. Come on, say goodbye to him. Oh. There we go. See you guys soon. Bye. Let me just put this tire back together. Good as new.